Right, folks, I'm here at the uh, Jaguar event in Sherway Gardens in Toronto. Went through a quick in introduction, had some fun climbing uh, some man-made hills in the Land Rover series trucks, which was really interesting. And I'm here with Ron now. Ron's my uh, safety guy and instructor here in the new 2019 Jaguar I-Pace. It'll go on sale, I believe, at the end of this year for a 2019 model year. Uh, the last time I saw one, if everybody watches my videos, was in England when I went to the fully charged event and they had a static one there, so I climbed all over it. But it didn't have, it, one, it was right hand drive, so it was a little bit different. And two, it didn't have a lot of the functionality still working. They were working out the software stuff. So here's an opportunity for me to actually drive it on a closed course, and Ron's going to instruct me through the way and be my other video uh, guy as well. So appreciate that, Ron. So, from an instrumentation standpoint, what can you walk me through on that? Um, well, we've got the two uh, touchscreen displays. Mm -hmm. The center, uh, your main cluster is fully configurable, so we can bring up our navigation as well as all our typical uh, controls and speedometer okay. and things. Mm -hmm. In the center, we've got our um, multimedia interface, uh, fully touchscreen. Uh, we've got a, it's an enhanced version of what we've got on the other Jaguar line okay. and with some added EV functionality and information. Okay, great. And I'm going to focus on doing some of that with a static car that they have after we... Uh, because people want to drive these things, so I don't want to hog it by just doing a lot of detail, but I'll, I'll get back to that in another segment afterwards. So I've adjusted my seat, um, the steering column, uh, there's got to be a button for that. Is there's that a release lever right there. Oh, release lever right there. Okay. I'll just do that quickly. Mm -hmm. All right, we've started the car, I've got my seat, and Ron's going to do just some video as well, and I'll, I'll mix it in. So, uh, walk me through the course here, Ron. Okay, well, uh, we've got, we've designed a, a course it'll highlight some of the characteristics we've got a tight little um, twisty portion yep. feel some of the dynamic handling character characteristics of the vehicle okay. as well as a long straight so we can get uh, some of that acceleration feel all 512 pound feet of torque excellent and all 394 horsepower well you love it and uh, evs we talk about the ev smile because we get all that torque right away when we want it so exactly like that it's so smooth and, and very linear on the power very smooth. As well. now this is an all-wheel drive there's two two uh, motors correct one there's the two axle, motors. Uh, mm -hmm. one in the rear excellent all right so push button to put in drive That's put on correct. the brake Yep, and uh, now we're ready setup. to go. Now this is not in any kind of a performance mode or anything like that. This is just a standard mode uh, That's right. setup. Is that correct? And we will confirm that we can. We're in. Uh, we can go into comfort mode, sure. which is your standard mode. Which will be your standard road mode. Mm -hmm. um, we've also have dynamic, and mm -hmm. it doesn't change. Uh, it doesn't increase any power delivery. What okay. it does is just change more of the throttle response, okay. um, steering response, and things like that. So it doesn't enhance the performance as far as the speed, yep. but uh, gives a little more sporty feel. Okay. Okay. Um, now we can also have a look here quickly on our EV setup. So we've got a regenerative braking on high. Mm -hmm. So when you lift off throttle, you can almost one foot pedal. Okay. Does it bring you to a stop and hold it? Uh, it, it won't bring you to a full stop. It'll slow you down quite significantly. Okay. So it's it's. Uh, you need to brake for the last little bit. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, and and the sensation or the analogy I would use mm -hmm. is it's equivalent to driving a manual transmission yep. in one gear and you're lifting off the throttle. Okay. For people that are not familiar with yeah. that sensation. Or gearing it down. Or correct. Down. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, and we've also have. Uh, our, e our creep function, mm -hmm. so we yep. can turn that on to behave yep. more like an automatic, where yep. when we reach the brake, it will actually creep ahead to give us more of a natural vehicle feeling. Okay. So we can leave that on if you like. Sure. Okay. That's fine, yeah. Then uh, we're good to go. On the, the course on the on. All right. And I we'll just hold off here for one second. Yep. And we'll just let them get a little further ahead. I love how quiet they are. Now, is this a base model I pace, or is this, this kind is of a the HSC? Trim? So this is the upper the upper trim. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing I commented on in Silverstone and fully charged was the appointments and the detail on the interior. So the really solid feel to the interior. You know, all the quality work, everything soft touch. You know, the build quality is there. Very very nice. One of the things we like to say is Jaguar has been building cars for almost a hundred years. Mm -hmm. So we've sorted out the ergonomics, correct seating position, yep. all the amenities, fit and finish, yep. and now we're just changing the propulsion system to electric. So now we're combining the the premium Jaguar luxury with yep. an electric vehicle. Excellent. You know, Ron, I'm going to bring you into the picture because okay. all they're seeing is your voice. Okay. So we'll do that, and then you'll you'll get some road coverage for us. Great. How's that that works better. Okay, let me know when we're ready to go. We're good to go. Okay, hold it on. Yes, so we're off to the right. Very nice. It's got a nice, um, really easy steering to do. It, it definitely, it's a heavier car. I drive a Nissan Leaf, so obviously it's a completely different vehicle from a height, uh, from a weight perspective. Correct, yeah. But very nimble. Mm -hmm. like the steering. Feels good too. It's a nice positive feel. It does feel nice. Very nice. So where you want me to punch it? Here, uh, right here. Once we straighten the wheel, you can open it up. Whoa, there's that torque. Love it. And you can feel some of the regen and then we yeah. use the brakes to finish. Yeah. Love it. 
just went through a nice little salt, uh, you know, kind of emergency avoidance, avoidance thing mm -hmm. there, which is really nice. The steering just mm -hmm. bites right away. Now we'll full lock to make it all the way around here. Yeah. Short turns to lock, I noticed. Mm -hmm. Not really many, yeah. Very nice. Look, another little straightaway here. We can punch it. Gotta love that. Love it. Had nice brakes. Yes. Didn't have to squeal. <laughs> no, that's right. And so now, yeah, we'll make our way around. Back in line. Back to here, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then we can do, do you want to do another lap? Sure, we'll okay. do one more. Just wait till they get ahead. Yes. Exactly. Well, very nice. I mean, no squeaks, rattles, anything like that. There wasn't much bumps here. We were in the parking lot of a shopping center, folks, but uh, where they have the, the track. I guess I'm good to go. Guess you're good to go. But there are a few little potholes that I was trying to avoid there. <laughs> yeah, the Courtesy unfortunate. Our Ontario yeah. winters that are coming up. Mm -hmm. Now, very nimble, very agile, quiet, you know, tons of power when you need it, as we, as we know EVs have. Yeah, what I really like is as soon as you dip into the throttle, the power is immediately there, and it's actually very confident and inspiring. It is, very much so. And, you know, visibility is very good on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, get on, you can get out of trouble really easy on this thing. Flip the cone. That's nah, okay. My bad. Lose a <laughs> point. I was trying to go a little tight there. Solid. I mean, the, the build quality is just solid, folks. There's just everything's tight. I know it's a new vehicle. It's got 350 kilometers on it, so it's brand new, pretty well off the off the boat. But very nice. Perfect, and we can make our way on um, this side to of the two left. cones. Yes. Yep. Perfect right here. Yeah. Yeah, the region's not terribly high. Like, no. I guess it's and when you go slower, then it's not as Correct. Yeah, you, that's right. That's right. I noticed that about it. But anyway, my just my first impressions, folks, from a quick drive around the parking lot for a couple of minutes. It's a it's a great vehicle. Um, very comfortable. Love the panoramic, uh, you know, all glass roof as we showed at the the last show. Um, but just, you know, the driving experience, visibility, very comfortable. You could definitely see this car just easy. It's yes. really easy. So, thanks, yeah. Ron. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Glad you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks, I'm here inside the uh, uh, Jagu mm -hmm. Jaguar I-Pace and got a chance to sit in the static display model and to look at the display. A lot of functionality here. I, no, I'm going to kind of learn as I go from a display perspective. Uh, one thing I immediately see is the HUD. Uh, I'm not sure if it's coming out in camera. I think so, but the, the HUD is clearly visible. The heads-up display looks like it's uh, floating above the front of the, of the vehicle from my depth perception perspective but it clearly gives me all my information uh, and I'm sure it's selectable on what information is available. Now in the center, <coughs> uh, the binnacle here behind the steering wheel, uh, I'm sure you can, uh, you've got a trip meter and all the different variations for range, um, the state of charge for the battery, uh, range in kilometers, right now it's showing 375 and it's at about 94.6 kilowatt hour battery size and it looks like it's almost at 100%, uh, just a little bit less from that perspective of a state of charge. Um, so different uh, menu settings I'm sure that you can do on this and change up your display. It's a digital display from a speed and uh, gear selectable perspective. Um, other other um, functionality on the steering wheel, of course, you've got your te telephone systems, um, you've got your, uh, uh, similar I think to what Tesla has uh, on their, <laughs> their uh, little doggles here, I forget what they're called now, and then of course you've got the different elements for heated steering wheel, lane assist, activation, your active cruise buttons to turn them on and off, and so forth. It's a very nice uh, padded steering wheel, does not have the flat bottom, it's, uh, it's a fully round steering wheel, but it's very thick, 
especially up in the 10 and 2 positions where most of the time you're grabbing a steering wheel very, uh, very thick. It's got a manual uh, control for both uh, telescoping and uh, tilt steering wheels. And the additional buttons down there, I think, for rear track, rear uh, front release uh, of the hood, and the rear trunk release, and so forth, and dimming of the lights and your parking brakes down there. In the center console, this is where uh, Ron was talking about. It's a very similar to most vehicles. You've got uh, within the home now, so you can get into navigation if you want and uh, do different settings in the navigation. It's a nice, clear, responsive display. Uh, it's very, very picturesque. I'm sure you can change the colors and all kinds of different things when enter your nav, but uh, things menus here. So again, settings, flames, home settings, maps, uh, I mean, tons of stuff that you can get, get into. The response of the display is very nice. Your nav, as I brought up earlier, uh, is really nice. Uh, the telephony, a pairing phone, I'm sure is easy and uh, gives you other metrics as well. Oh, we're going to get out of the music. I got to mute it again. Bluetooth, that would be for your camera settings. So it looks like it's got uh, 360 type of settings where uh, I believe you can scroll or just double tap to zoom in and out of that to see around. We've got people standing around the car, so you're actually getting some visibility there of the 360 camera. It's got your, uh, I think you can play with the front. You can see which cameras you've got your front and sides. That's pretty cool. Uh, it gives you like a watching a movie film there. So you can see from both your front uh, and then off to the sides, uh, almost like a V uh, comp compilation of uh, images there that that is really cool. I have not seen that before and vice versa for the rear so to give you as opposed to just a flat rear it combines those images into a more 180 degree uh, field of uh, view from that perspective so that is really cool and then your, your of course your straight flat back camera. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff about the camera which I did not know and I guess you can do your sides of course you've got your light right side and your left side so depending on where you're parking for both uh, right-hand drive and left-hand drive vehicles, if you don't want to get that dreaded curb rash, uh, these cameras will come in nice and handy. And Nissan has something similar and so do others, so it's great to see a Jaguar incorporate that. Um, rounding out, let's see, we've got parking assist uh, numbers here. I think that's for if I wanted to park, but I don't want to park because it's already parked. And so that would be for parking, parallel parking. Uh, this one would be for parallel parking, and I think that's just for your static parking, which I'm going to turn off again and I believe it's disabled, so. Um, uh, you know, very comprehensive, and I'm sure there's a, a lot of functions that I'm missing, but it's a nice display, very responsive. And then down below in your HVAC, uh, everything's digital, uh, automatic HVAC vac controls, um, this dial, and, and they're dual climate zone by the looks of it, because I'm just tapping on one number, and you can reset the other one as well. So pretty cool stuff. Heated seats, if you want to turn them on and off, and then your different settings for HVAC. Everything's touch base, there's a couple of knobs and buttons here, uh, but nice. And then very uh, other functionality, you got your transmission selection uh, buttons here, and then various others uh, for height. I believe that this one is the top of the line, so it does have suspension that you can change up and down, and then different modes, which I don't know what they are, and I won't play with them. Interior-wise, uh, pretty good-sized glove box. I mean, I don't know why people harp about glove boxes being small or big. I mean. Uh, you know, if you want to store stuff, you've always got the trunk, pretty good storage in the pockets, not massive. This, this uh, center console here is pretty nice. It's got a good usable space that you can get to for elements. You've got your armrests and you've got your uh, holders here. From that perspective, there you go. That's a couple of USB, 12 volt, and a micro SD card as well. So a good size for a lot of the stuff that you're going to use. Very comfortable seat, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, all power with many modes, uh, auto dimming mirror and uh, camera system. Looks like they've got an interior camera or some sensors as well. It could be microphones and then sunglass storage for those who need that. Mentioned the panoramic room, one piece glass, uh, all glass drinks, and then into your back seat. One well, of the gentlemen just popped the trunk, so it gives you a visualization of uh, what's open. We've got, we had the trunk open and we've got the front open, and they're looking at it now. And I'll go out and show you what that looks like.
All right, folks, I'm here at the Jaguar Canada uh, media launch event here in Toronto, and I'm with Jaguars Canada's President and CEO, Wolfgang Hoffman. Did I got that right? Correct. All right, well, Good thank morning, you very Ken. much for taking the time out of your busy schedule no to worries. talk to me. I no appreciate worries. it. Uh, I just wanted to give uh, our viewers just a sense of Jagu Jaguars Canada's vision for the I-PACE, um, where you see that fitting into your marketplace here in Canada, because, you know, every country is a little bit different on EV adoption, right. and, and your excitement for the vehicle and whatever you can share from that perspective. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we were very excited. Yes. Um, as a traditional premium manufacturer, we are the first ones to introduce a battery electric vehicle. And we're also a relatively small company, so mm -hmm. I think it, we caught a lot of the competition by surprise with the introduction of the, the I-PACE. Mm -hmm. And it's, of course, very important to the external world. It shows the new Jaguar, the new way forward, the new way of mm -hmm. driving. Um, we strongly believe in electrification being the future. But it was also very invigorating internally. If you think about when, when Dr. Spad and, and the team made the decision four or five years ago to build a battery electric vehicle and they assembled a team and it was like, wow, we are doing this? Really? Is, is that is that for real or is it a joke? I mean, that, it was really invigorating for them to to be at, at the, the, the brink of a new technology and, and to ha have the chance to build a vehicle from scratch, a new concept, a new design. Um, it was just fantastic for the whole company. Yeah, it just kind of re-energized, you know, that whole design and, and that whole uh, engineering element to try something new with a proven, you know, with a proven quality design and, and build chemistry that Jaguar is known for from its history, correct? Yeah, I mean, if you, th if you think Jaguar, you always think about our great racing heritage, sports cars, you think about E-Type, obviously, D-Type, you think about Le Mans that we won, yep. and great, great, sexy design. And our chief designer, Ian Cullum, when he had the, the opportunity to basically built and design and, and battery electric wheel from scratch he he took the complete liberty to to create something really unique we we wanted to build a car that's on the outside not massively big but has a lot of interior space and right. therefore we move the cabin forward you don't have an engine so you can move your cabin much for, more forward so you have now an interior space of an F pace but the outside um, is much much smaller so really great for city users and parking uh, abilities yeah. that we haven't seen before which is a big deal in a lot of the European countries because getting around it can be tight oh uh, it, yeah. you know it definitely has a nice staunch to it I call it you know kind of a, a, a little bit of a CUV kind of you know heritage there, right. but more sedanish features. Uh, very lovely design. Um, now you, you were mentioning that for, from a Canadian perspective, um, this is a model, obviously 2019 model year, mm -hmm. and there's there's been a fantastic demand in pre-orders, not only in Canada but worldwide. Correct. I think Correct. You guys are excited about that. Yeah, we're very excited. Um, we will start delivery to our dealers with demonstrator vehicles beginning of October. Okay. So give customers the chance to come in, drive the car, feel it, you know, smell it, sit in it, and, and experience what, what we are so passionate about. And then we expect first customer deliveries at around November time frame. Yeah. The order bank is um, very full. Good. So I, I can only recommend <laughs> to go to the dealer as soon, as, 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 soon yeah. as possible. Yeah. yeah, but that's how it should be. You know, yes. It should be a car where demand always exceeds supply. That is good for everybody. It's also good for the customers. Mm -hmm. It keeps residual values high and so on That's right. and um, it's something that you should always be striving for as a premium manufacturer and as an like as bringing electric car to market are you also working with your customers from a charging infrastructure perspective um, are you helping them if they want to have a charger at home are you doing any recommendation or any education when you're selling the uh, ipace as well it's yeah the, the whole sales process nowadays then is a completely different one obviously the salesperson has to be very uh, versatile about uh, you know the the uh, engineering yes. and and electric engineering yep. um, uh, infrastructure around it. They have, of course, contacts to their local engineers, and they can recommend something. However, at the end of the day, of course, the customer has a contract with whoever installs the charger at their house, and that's, I think, where it should be. So we try to consult. We try to help them. 
mm -hmm. um, to build the, the proper infrastructure in the houses, but at the end of the day, of course, it's the customer's uh, responsibility. Is, is Jaguar Canada doing anything from a public infrastructure standpoint? Uh, is there any uh, co-funding or co-engineering or any, any, co any combination of efforts there? I mean, we, ha we have a, a partnership with, with ChargePoint, okay. and uh, that makes it obviously much, much easier for our, our customers because they have already a, a, big, a big network. Yes. It's, it's a very you know philosophical question as well. Do you as a car manufacturer go into the charging right. um, environment no, that's like, and probably back in the whatever, 50s, 60s, they might have discussed yep. that as well. Do we want to buy filling stations? Right. But I think there are people who do these kind of things better mm -hmm. than we do. And I would leave that up to the experts. But I'm, I'm not ruling out any um, the partnerships going forward um, with, with any uh, charging, right. charging company. But it, it has to be then the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, my my uh, plea is always, you know, the, the government of the world have to get into the business now as well, and they have to to use some of the taxpayers' monies to build infrastructures and to make it easier for customers to charge their cars. Because if I want to have a reduction in CO2 then I also have to do something for it. And the best way that that could be done, I believe, is, is supporting the infrastructures here in Canada. Totally agree. Now we've taken a little bit of a step back from that with the provincial change that we've had right. here. But again, you know, things will, are still continuing to move forward, be at, at a different mm -hmm. pace. Um, so it's great to see the i finally hit the Canadian shores and start getting out there to dealer showrooms. Now during the, the training briefing, one of the gentlemen mentioned that there's going to be a new racing series set up specifically for the i for the I -Pace. Can you talk a little right. bit about that? Yeah, we. That was brand new to me. So. Yeah, we, I mean, you, you might know that we are racing in the Formula yes. E. Yeah. Uh, so with a Panasonic Jaguar racing team. And we now established a, a one-make racing series with the I-Pace. Mm -hmm. So wow. as part of the, the program during the Formula E races, we will have, um, I think, around about 20 I-Paces that are racing on the racetrack. Okay. And we have you know, journalists racing, um, customers, VIPs racing. So it's, it's also then part of the entertainment process mm -hmm. within yep. the Formula E, but it also showcases the capability of that car. Yes. I haven't even started mentioning some of the, the technology and, and some of the figures. The I-Pace is accelerating in, in just 4.5 seconds from 0 to 100. Yes. The center of gravity is very low because and, the battery is at it, the bottom. And I felt it, so yes. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's also very, very quick from 100 to 0, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the recuperation system that we have is very, very effective. So when you drive it and you lift your foot off the gas, you really feel the car then slowing down. the accelerator. Down. Oh. <laughs> no more gas. Of, yeah. No more gas I, I of you. the accelerator. It's, it's hard to say, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and you feel then the recuperation because it also then slows down like, you know, in the old days you used the engine brake. Yep. when you went downhill and then you can do s similar things now with an electric vehicle but at the same time you recharge the battery which is fantastic our range is approximately 380 kilometers so no range anxiety uh, necessary anymore you can leave that at home and and just go out and enjoy enjoy the vehicle and you know you come home you charge the car and overnight your car is um, fully charged and you leave the house with a full tank of electrons. <laughs> exactly. And we talk about that all the time. Mm. Now, I'm excited to see the passion. Thank you very much for pulling this event together and, Thank you, and for your staff to invite me down there. And I look to uh, see more from, from yeah. Jaguar in the coming months and the coming years on your growing electrification strategy, because I think you guys are taking this to heart. You're, you're, you put a lot of thought, engineering, and design yeah. behind what you're bringing to the market. And I think it's going to continue forward, hopefully in other models as well. We'll see some other stuff come out. I, I know you can't do. say anything about that, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's the designers are they're cooking up some stuff. So, yeah. okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, take bye. care. Bye. Thanks. Bye.